the camera keeps trying to focus on that pig behind me. Uh, I might, it might be gone in a bit, we'll see, we'll see. So I'm gonna talk about why I've been away for such a long time and talk about the knitting slump I was in because I feel like there's a correlation there. Yeah, so I'm just gonna get into it. So the reason I've not been knitting for a while, it's quite, if you're not new here, and you're here just for the advice, skip to this time. Um, if you're a current subscriber, I thought I would say why I've not been filming for so long because you know you deserve that <laughs> but like i say if you're here just for advice skip to this time there's also time stamps for each bit of advice if you just want that certain piece of advice it all started like in may time and that's too personal but that has gone away now forever so it's all good then it was summer so then it was june I spent the entire month gardening yes the entire month every single day a whole month gardening. The guy we bought the house from spent a whole year <laughs> ignoring it. So I've had to go in and saw trees down, take out bushes, de-weed, do a lot, a lot of work. So during this time of gardening was when I found my knitting mojo again because I was working, working, working so hard during the day. I came in and I knit and I felt like I deserved to knit because I've been working so hard. More on that later. Lastly, went to Amsterdam in July, got engaged. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, yeah, that's another reason why I haven't been filming for so long. Been wedding planning, we've been together for 10 years, so we kind of want to get married soon rather than waiting years and years and wedding knitting, but that would be my next video. Um, yes, so. <laughs> for the first part of this video, I was trying really, really hard not to use my left hand. For no spoilers, but now I can. Mm. So I'm going to talk about why did I know I was in a knitting slump. So it was a six month mark of my New Year's resolutions, my knitting resolutions. So I thought I would do a check-in. <laughs> I kept up with sewing a project as soon as it was finished. Listen to my podcast, audiobooks while knitting. <laughs> That's it. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I had 10 resolutions looking back now is too many so then it was time to like work out what I'd made which I shouldn't have had to do because I started a knitting journal but I wasn't keeping on top of the knitting journal which was made me really sad because I was so excited again year to do my knitting journal so yeah I sat down and worked out what I'd made in April and May I made nothing 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 I also didn't go to my local knit and natter for months and like red flag alert <laughs> And the knitting journal I hadn't been filling in. I did like the first two makes of the year and then it got water damaged and I didn't care. And then in June, I was like, seeing this, I said to myself, Naomi, sort it out. <laughs> so I bought a new book and I've actually kept on top of it every single project I've done. So basically I write the pattern out, where the pattern's from, the yarn I used, notes I have, and then I stick the yarn here and then I've saved space because at the end of the year I'm going to print out two by three squares of the project I finished and stick them all together. I just really was so excited at the beginning of the year to have a knitting journal and now I'm doing it I feel like so so happy and how nice does it look? <laughs> it's so pleasing. I can't wait to look back in like 10 years time and be like oh yeah that's when I knitted that and I have all my experiences from knitting it what went wrong, what went right, what I liked about it. And I'm really excited because I've been knitting for like seven years, but I've never actually sat down and worked out what I've made. So I'm really, really excited for this. I'm going to do it next year as well. But I thought I would save the real tour for the end of the year. So I thought I would show you from the first page to the last page of all my makes and the journal around Christmas, but maybe January, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to talk about my old resolutions, which was a lot. <laughs> Also because the journal's got like lots of things stuck in, the noise it makes when you turn. <laughs> okay. So my knitting resolutions were keep on top with knitting journal. Sew up project as soon as finished. Listen to more podcasts or audio books while knitting. Less foe and more crafting. Use nicer yarns. Knit more black things. One project a month from each book. Make more toys. Use yarn stats as much as possible. Too many. <laughs> like, even reading it out, it's like, that is way too many. So my new ones now are so simple and realistic. So my new ones now are knit what makes me happy, 
sew up after knitting because when I got my mojo back in June I was knitting things and sewing them up straight after and it was so nice and I made this swan door stop and this was the ultimate what have I knitted it was just shapes and if I'd left it I probably would never sew it up because the shapes are so random so the reason I had no knitting mojo was because I was obsessed with knitting clothes and it wasn't just since January that this has been a thing I've been trying for years but since January I have become obsessed with it because if you knit you have to knit clothes right I would try and fail so many patterns so in April and May when I made nothing I was just trying and failing patterns I was knitting quite a lot but I nothing was finished and I was getting frustrated I do remember I was getting frustrated I was only looking at clothes patterns to knit I was, wasn't looking at anything else I definitely feel like the pressure is on to knit clothes from Instagram you go on the search page people are making garments you go on YouTube people are knitting garments in the round with fancy yarns with fancy patterns there's not many YouTubers who are knitting like dishcloths or toys for example majority are knitting clothes on the Ravelry homepage it's clothes it's just <sighs> this is so weird but I kept telling myself you have to knit clothes because you knit you have to be conscious of the fashion industry and fast fashion and you're a knitter so you have to knit clothes because that's sustainable and much better than buying from a shop like I was obsessed with it like so much pressure everywhere to like make on clothes because you can craft it's ridiculous you don't have to make clothes because you sew crochet knit you don't have to <laughs> but no I was obsessed with it like obsessed obsessed like and then once my knitting mojo was back I went through my Instagram saved and just got rid of all the garments that I'd saved and I need to go from a ravelry pattern collection still and do that but yeah because you knit you have to knit clothes and that's what people expect I got so stuck in this vicious circle that I was not a happy knitter I was not knitting things that made me happy I was miserable I was stressed that just doesn't go with knitting it goes with sewing but not with knitting I forgot what made me happy which is toys and amigurumi hats and scarves I like making too so when my knitting mojo was back I went straight into knitted toys it says on my notes I don't think I'm ever but I've changed it to I'm never going to knit a garment <laughs> and that's okay so I thought I'd share with you some tips I found really helpful when coming out of a knitting slump number one and you'll understand this from my knitting goals is set realistic expectations don't go into a massive project after being in a slump it will feel like too much it will feel overwhelming it's too much pick a pattern and a pattern design you've used for so you know how the pattern reads and the flow of it so you know kind of what you're doing already before you even pick up the needles so for me I picked a pattern designer who I use a lot because I know her patterns really well and they're fun fun is an important one knitting should be fun but it should be even more fun when coming out of a knitting slump when you're in a knitting slump you need to find that happiness that knitting brings you again so that you need to find something fun that you'll like to knit that you'll look back in years time and have happy memories of knitting something that'll make you smile while making it and something that'll smile when you finished making it next one is set your knitting bubble up put a nice candle on have your drink ready have everything you need for that pattern so you're not constantly getting up to find stuff because that's the worst <laughs> and it's if it's a pattern that you can watch tv with watch your favorite tv show your favorite film your favorite youtuber <laughs> and i know it's summer but i love blankets no matter how hot it is like for me getting under the blanket is just like I'm here now I have all my things my stitch markers my scissors sticky notes everything you need on your table next to you the next thing which I want to talk about is you don't have to see knitting as a reward or as a treat for working hard which is something I found in June even though I was knitting and I was making a lot of things I did see it as a treat because I'd been working so hard during the day you don't have to that is not true Goats. 
you can knit any time and that's especially important if you're in a knitting slump because the more you're in the knitting slump the harder it will be to come out of it's kind of like depression <laughs> No, it really is okay. The later you get help with depression, the harder it is to become better, which is, it is, knitting slump is kind of a depression because you're not doing anything that makes you happy. So the longer you're in it, the harder it will be to like, <sighs> climb out of. <laughs> I'm back, baby. <laughs> so this next one is excellent advice. This was off my mum and it's just the best advice. Knit for half an hour or an hour every single day. So she told me an hour and I managed to do it, but I put half an hour here because an hour does seem like a long time. This is the reason I came out of my knitting slump. It really is. It doesn't have to be in one sitting, like don't sit down for an hour and just get stressed because I have to knit an hour every day. You can knit while your cup of tea is brewing in those four minutes, because yes, it takes four minutes to brew a tea and you don't squeeze the tea bag. <laughs> Maybe the washing machine has 10 minutes left and you spend those 10 minutes knitting. While your tea is cooking, your pasta's boiling 20 minutes, you can see that as a time to sit down and do some knitting, like fill the dishwasher up later, wash up later. If you're in a knitting slump, it's important to, to make time for knitting. You will be absolutely amazed at how much knitting you can do in even five minutes. I, I was blown away. I couldn't believe it. And you can be productive during the day, 10 minute breaks. And at the end of the day, you'll be like, wow, I've knit a lot. And if you're looking to be productive when you're knitting, I found that listening to audio books and podcasts makes me knit faster because I'm not looking up as much. Um, there's no dramatic distractions. You know, when you're watching a film or a TV show and you just, you, these are empty, by the way, I'm just getting these for prop. <laughs> So yeah, you're watching a TV show or a film and something very dramatic happens and you're just like, holding it in like this for ages. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to be more productive, audio books and podcasts is the way to go. So this next one is, if you're found you're not knitting because you're too tired, try picking up a simple stockinet project or just cast on 20 stitches and work in stockinette. You can use this for something later and it's such a small manageable way to get out of your knitting slump and get your knitting mojo back. I'm at my knitting mojo now but I still pick up a simple stockinette pattern or project when I'm tired because I get tired a lot and I want to knit. I mentioned here before that I've got a brain injury and because of that I have like chronic fatigue so I have to find patterns that work for me and my tiredness. So I am speaking from experience. I'm not just saying knit all the time, even if you're tired, like you're just <laughs> making it in work for you and your lifestyle. I've heard people say they don't knit at all when they're tired, but I think that's because a lot of people do complex patterns. Uh, if you're tired, you can just work a simple sucking it pattern or a square that can be a blanket later or just a random square, you're still knitting. The thing with knitting is it doesn't have to be a complex pattern if you if you've been knitting for 10 years and you only knit like squares or dishcloths or blankets like it doesn't matter you don't have to go into the deep sea of complex patterns you can just knit simple things that make you happy knitting is knitting so if you're knitting too much of the same thing that can become boring and take you away from knitting and that's like the downward slope to getting into the knitting slump. So if you feel that boredom coming, this is controversial advice, start another project. <laughs> I feel like I'm the only person saying that um, because I know it's bad to have lots of projects on the go, but this is great advice. If you're bored on project, start another project. Who says you've got to finish all the projects at once? You don't, you don't. So this one is such a great way to get out of your knitting slump. Buy a knitting kit. It comes with the needles, the colours are already planned for you, it comes with the yarn, the pattern's printed out, it comes with the stuffing if it's a toy, it, it just it's just all there in one bundle. You don't have to do any work, it comes to your door or you go to the yarn shop and buy one and it's just all done for you because if you're in a knitting slump and you want to come out of it, planning a project can be a little overwhelming. It's also an exciting way to get your knitting mojo back. If you're in a knitting slump and the thought of starting a new project daunts you because you've got so many already, you could pick up another project and just do a couple of rows. The thing with getting out of your mojo is it doesn't have to be big things all at once. It can just be small little steps. It doesn't matter. 
what everyone else is doing. You're doing things to help you. And if that's small steps, that's okay. The whole point of this advice is to get out of a knitting mojo. And if that takes a long time with small steps, it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, you're out of the slump and you're knitting and that's all that matters. You could also sew up completed knitted items. I need to follow this advice. <laughs> But yeah, knitting slumps, you don't have to be knitting to come out of them. You can sort completed items, you could sort your stash, you could look through your pattern library. And if you do see a pattern that you're like, oh, bookmark that or place it somewhere where you can see it and you might start it then, or you might walk past it and be like, oh yeah, I'll start that. And then it, that's like a that's like a little way to remind you that you like this pattern and it makes you happy. Lastly, a nice thing to do if you're in a knitting slump is to cast on a new project. Don't do any knitting, just cast the rows on and that is the start of coming out of your slump. It's such a big but simple way to help you get out of your knitting slump. So I really hope you found this advice helpful. I hope I haven't missed anything. So at the beginning, I mentioned all the reasons why I was in a knitting slump and I thought I would talk about it's only been a month, but I I feel like a massive change has come. I've made so many things and I'm sticking to my knitting journal. I'm having fun doing it. The thought of knitting clothes has gone forever. That was like a thing in the back of my head constantly. The stress of it was just too much and that's just gone. I'm not going to knit garments ever. I'm back at my local knit and natter. Those ladies are very excited about my engagement, but more on that next week where I talk about my knitting plans for the wedding. And I have written here in my notes, well, I've been knitting my own wedding dress um, as a teaser, but now you know how much I hate knitting garments. So no, I'm not gonna knit my wedding dress. <laughs> that just, ah, I did watch some YouTube videos of people making their own wedding dresses and it just seems so stressful. And I, I just don't want to put myself through that. I'm going to make it as simple as possible because I can sew, but even if you sew a dress, it, it, it could go wrong. And I, I just don't want that stress. So I thought I'd share with you the things I've made since coming out of my knitting slump and how long it took me to make them. So first up is this pig head by Sincerely Louise. That was the 3rd to the 7th of June. Next was this elephant head by Sincerely Louise, which was the 4th to the 9th of June. Next is... I made the infamous fox head by Sincere Louise. And that was 10th to the 13th of June. The swan doorstop was the 17th to the 22nd of June. Stephen was like, we need a doorstop. And I was like, hold my beer, I'll make one. <laughs> and then I made this Van Gogh doll for Amsterdam. <laughs> and that was made in three days. I was well chuffed. <laughs> We're going to Amsterdam on the 2nd of July and I just had to finish him. This was so much fun. Like the old me would have just put it down because it, it was a lot of pieces to make, but look at his little hat. Those are all separate, like, those are all separate pieces of yarn for the straw. I do feel bad though, because we went to the Van Gogh Museum and I left him in the locker by accident. I completely forgot to get him out. <laughs> and then in July, I've made a lot of things, but therefore next week's video because they're wedding things. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope my advice was helpful. And if you have any other tips, put them in the comments below. Because, you know, knitting stumps are not nice places to be. So as much advice as possible we can put out there, let's put it out there. And, you know, have happy little knitters everywhere. <laughs> All right, thank you for watching. Bye.